Hi, and welcome to this week's lecture, uh, which is going to uh, cover the topic of data wrangling. And so this really builds on uh, what we talked about in the last lecture on data management. And uh, it's going to think about uh, both the, the side of how we clean up spreadsheets and get them organized so that we can export them and read them into R and other software for analysis, and then also how we can uh, subset and transform uh, and work with data once we get it into R. To get it uh, almost, you know, get it in the right shape for for further analysis and, and yeah. So specifically, we're going to cover the concepts of of what is tidy data and what makes data tidy, uh, the different shapes of data, and specifically in terms of wide versus long formats for organizing data, how to reshape data. We're going to talk about how to subset and calculate statistics for data, something that we'll cover more in in lab two, and then how to merge across data sets. Uh, and these, uh, this kind of data wrangling portion, uh, you know, it's often said, you know, that cleaning up data is going to take 80% of the time of any analysis. And so it is something that, that, that skills worth learning because there are things that you're going to kind of need to do time and time again when you work with real world data, particularly uh, other people's data that can often be messy. Uh, so this table here is a great example of of really poorly formatted data. Uh, it's not the sort of thing that R is going to be able to read in and, and do much with. And that's because of kind of how it's structured. I mean, you've got a, a, a header row that's completely empty, so R wouldn't know what to do with that. You've got a bunch of metadata uh, stored in, in rows before the actual columns. The actual data now starts on line six. Uh, we have a blank column in B. We don't have column headers in D or E, so we're not really sure what those columns are. We have calculated the statistics in columns F and G. Um, generally would arg uh, argue against doing calculations in your spreadsheet and leave those to uh, R, which can do them much more cleanly and powerfully, you know, in, in Excel. Uh, you know, to do calculations, you have to literally drag equations down through, through grid cells, uh, which is much more error prone um, than applying functions. And then again, we have a whole set of uh, Additionally, calculated values in rows 11, 12, and 13 with a gap between them, you know, visually appealing, but not actually a nice compact data set for analysis. So what is tidy data? So tidy data has three key characteristics. Uh, so the idea would be that each variable must be in its own column and that we're using columns to indicate what the variables in our data set are or then each row corresponds to an observation. And there's only one, uh, you, a single observation shouldn't be spread over multiple rows. You know, each observation has its own column. And then each value has uh, its own cell. And that gives us this overall shape of data that is rectangular, um, kind of this row by column tabular format. Um, and that, that idea that each value has its own cell comes back to something we talked about in the last lecture about the need to autonomize data, you know, you're not putting multiple pieces of information uh, in one column. Um, but it also means that the other thing we said uh, to reiterate, you don't want to leave empty cells. So jagged data where there's, you know, like we saw in the, the that badly formatted example, there's a lot of emptiness it's not clear how to interpret empty headers. It's not clear how to interpret empty cells. Um, and one of the things that R provides us to help with that is this idea of a, an NA value and not available. So you can literally, when you're building a spreadsheet, use NA to distinguish missing data from uh, you know, zeros. So you don't want to fill in missing data with zeros or some other default value because it would be interpreted as data and you'd get you know, statistics wrong. The other thing that's really useful to think about when getting data ready to export uh, into uh, you know, our other software for analysis is the, the need to have those header variables uh, with, des describe what each variable is, the header column, uh, to be machine readable. Uh, so what do I need, mean by machine readable? Um, so one thing that, that often messes up uh, statistical software and other software um, are simple things like spaces and variables, uh, because you can imagine that if you had, 
uh, you've written out code that references maximum space temperature, space parentheses, degrees Celsius, um, that those spaces would cause R to interpret these as different things, not as one variable. Those parentheses might be interpreted as, you know, part of a function. Um, you know, it would be easy for R to misinterpret the code you've written. Um, it's much easier, uh, not that it can't do it, you're just gonna have to put your variable names in quotes and it, there's a lot of extra uh, hoops you have to jump through, but it's just really not worth the effort in order to have spaces in variable names. Uh, if you do like having kind of that visual spacing, uh, use things like underscores, um, and also try to avoid using symbols uh, within variable names because again, they might be interpreted by a, a software language as actual uh, syntax. Also recommend against using number, numbers at the start of variable names. Again, because a number of uh, languages don't like that in, in variable naming, like R will tend to, you know, if you, if you have a columns neighbored numbered like one, two, three, four, five, it'll change those to like X1, X2, X3, X4, X5. Um, and then on the human readable side, uh, you wanna make sure you're using meaningful variable names, not too short, uh, su sufficient information, and a, a consistent style. So if you're you know, always using underscores, you know, use them consistently. Don't use, ha you know, underscores in half your variables and periods in another half and hyphens in another number. If you're using, you know, uh, what's called camel case where, you, you know, instead of using spaces, you just capitalize every word. Um, you know, use that consistently. Don't flip in fact back and forth. It's not, uh, in addition to making your code more readable, it also just makes it easier to remember what a variable was named because you have a consistent style for naming variables. And there's no single style that's perfect. It's just uh, what works for you and being consistent. So here's an example of a data set that's not horribly formatted. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, an ID column uh, with, you know, that's a var variable here is ID, variable is date, variable is glucose. Uh, we, one row is each observation. So we've got that row column format, but we're missing data. So this date data here is a problem of, of how do we interpret this data? Um, what do we do with it? Um, does this imply that these dates are supposed to continue down, that all these observations were all made on the same date? Or does it imply that the date was missing and that maybe, you know, the, the way you would analyze that this was, you know, you have to interpolate between these observations. Like it's, it's not obvious without the metadata and it's just you know, much simpler to, to fill those, that bit of information in. Um, I'm gonna go on a slight tangent now, and also since we're talking about dates, wanted to reiterate uh, the value of using uh, this, the ISO uh, standard date format and date time format, where you have you know, uh, years, months, days, then hours, minutes, seconds, and time zone, um, which is a nice advantage, uh, two key advantages over kind of standard uh, US or European date conventions. Uh, one is that if you sort things, it sorts chronologically, uh, which makes it very easy if you're using this in variable names or, or just in data or in uh, file names. I use this in file names a lot to keep track of things rather than version numbers. Um, also a nice advantage that uh, it's easy to, to have a consistent uh, representation of reduced accuracy data by just dropping terms. So if I only care about the date, I just drop the hours, minutes, seconds, and time zones, and I have you know, an unambiguously formatted thing. If I need to know the hour, but I don't know the minutes and seconds, I just include hour. If I just care about a month, I just have year, month, I drop day. Uh, it's also nice that there's a lot of uh, our utilities to help work with dates and times and treats them differently than you know, numbers or um, character strings. So you can actually use them, you know, say as an x-axis on a, a plot. And we'll see a couple of these uh, in lab two, such as the, the date and POSIX functions. Uh, and there's also a, a, a nice library, Lubridate, for working with date information. Uh, so back to uh, messy data. Um, how do we make this tidy? Um, in this example, uh, which is also not an unusually, unusual thing to see how data might be formatted, uh, first thing I would note is we have what appears to be a time variable 
now going across a row. So we violated that idea that we want variables to be in columns. And then again, uh, like in the other example, we have a, a lot of missingness. So is this time missing or is this time replicated? I think in this case it was intended to be replicated. Um, and then we have this additional you know, missing column headers. Again, are those replicates of observations or, or it's really not sure, not clear what those are intended to be. Here's the same data set now reorganized in a tidy format where each variable is a, 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 a column each observation is a row, and uh, we have that tidy format. And one thing that's notable about the tidy format is, uh, you know, it's kind of one of those things that seems obvious once you've seen it and it's explained, but the fact that so much data out there is in non-tidy formats it means that it, you know, it's not obvious that this would be a good way to format a data. And there's lots of uh, uh, you know, value in going over it just because uh, you know, it provides a clean, consistent format for, for data analysis. So at this point, you may have finished up, you know, organizing your data, you know, in your spreadsheet. You'd want to always save data as CSV so that it's easy to export, and then we can read it into R using something like read CSV. Uh, so we'll move on from here to next talk about kind of uh, the different ways that we can organize uh, data that is still rectangular and still filled in, but, but there's kind of different trade-offs and different files. Uh, data formats.